Okay, so full warning here everyone, this video from a visual perspective ain't gonna be the most entertaining. It's gonna be a lot of me standing in one spot, lobbing rockets over walls and praying for kills. But I'm gonna admit, that's going to be what you're gonna be doing with this weapon and 99% of the time, that is something you really have to understand before you shell out your hard-earned certs or daybreak coins for it. G'day there once again viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today guys, we're going to be reviewing the new launcher that just made its way to Planet Side 2, the NS Scorpion. Now, I know that we have our standard weapon review format here that we like to stick to, but I do kind of want to start off by just getting straight into what this launcher actually is and how it works mechanically, because it caught me off guard when I first picked it up. And being completely honest, I find it to be a really awkward weapon to use. So let's tackle that little thorn in the backside first. The NS Scorpion is an airburst launcher, which means that it fires a small, slow-moving missile that will then explode in the air to deploy six separate bomblets. Now, the range in which these bomblets deploy is determined by the user, where they must aim down sights, hold the trigger to essentially increase the distance at which the missile will travel before deploying, and then release when the desired range is reached. The rocket will then travel that set range before deploying the bomblets. Now, the launcher has a maximum arming distance of 200 meters, and reaching that distance in the charge-up process will automatically fire the weapon. It also charges at a rate of 50 meters worth of arming distance per second, which means that for the weapon to reach 50 meters, you'll be charging it up for one second. 100 meters will take you two seconds. I'm sure you can work out the rest. It takes up to four seconds to charge before you can fire, depending on the situation. Potentially a long time standing out in the open, but more on that a bit later. All this so far for a pretty complicated little package, and this is the first launcher we've used in the game that has had a hard range set by the user before it's even fired. And there's another couple of factors to consider here that sort of set this launcher apart. For one, the Scorpion cannot be fired from the hip. You must be aiming down sights during the entire process. If you're mid-charge per se, and then you move out of aiming down sights midway, you'll have to charge the weapon from the start back up again. In addition, the weapon has a minimum arming distance of 40 meters before it will even let you fire in the first place, which means that the weapon will have to travel 40 meters before the bomblets will be deployed. If you were to fire the weapon and it hits something before the bomblets are deployed, the weapon just acts like any old rocket launcher, just a less potent one by comparison to your standard dump fire or launched weapons, but that's something to consider. But that all there means that you simply can't use this weapon for self-defense against a max suit or even a surprise vehicle due to those limitations. Kind of does limit it down to very specific scenarios, which is fine. I'm all for weapons having their own niches to work with in the game as it's, you know, what keeps gameplay for the weapons feel unique and it gives them a need to exist in the game in the first place. So how does it perform in those specific areas? This is where we should look at the hard stats. The core rocket itself dishes out a pretty solid 700 direct damage and has an indirect damage of 300 before the 0.5 meter mark and extends out to a minimum damage, a minimum indirect damage, sorry, of 50 at the 3 meter mark. Now, as far as the bomblet stats are concerned, because that's the important part here, it's a little bit murky at this stage, but based on some of the initial testing done within the community, the wiki page for the launcher reports that each bomblet does 450 damage to a main battle tank. And considering that main battle tanks don't have any resistances to heavy assault launchers from the top or front, then we can presume that each shell does 450 damage. As far as indirect damage is concerned, I have absolutely no idea how to calculate this one, so more information on that will come out later. But yeah, if all bomblets hit a main battle tank, for example, then you're going to be looking at a potential damage output of 2,700 damage, which means that you can effectively two-shot vehicles like the Prowler and the Mag Rider based on these numbers alone. Theoretically, that's a bloody powerful payload, and considering its pretty short reload time of 3.43 seconds, it sounds mighty impressive. But there's a little bit more to the launcher than meets the eye again. For those who aren't quite up to scratch on damage resistances and how they're calculated in the game, here's a very quick rudimentary crash course on it. 
For multiple vehicles, including lightnings and main battle tanks, they will take a certain amount of damage depending on your angle to the target as opposed to where you hit the vehicle. So if you happen to fire a rocket from the rear of a tank but you hit the side, you will still deal the damage as if you hit the rear of the tank. Rel back in the day, when he was but a humble YouTuber, did a video on this topic a long time ago, and I've left a link to that in the description down below for those who want to scratch up a little bit more on the topic. But in the case of the Scorpion, it gets a little funky because the total damage you dish out is not calculated based on your relative position to your armored target, but instead on the relative position that your bomblet will deploy from the tank. So yeah, people have worked out that if you aim well enough, you can score all of your bomblets to hit and deploy on the right spot. You can practically kill a lightning in one volley and a main battle tank in two. This sounds a little too powerful as it stands right now, there's no denying that. Until you factor in the muzzle velocity, only 32 meters a second. For context, the decimator has 60 meters per second muzzle velocity. So essentially half the speed of a decimator is how fast this rocket is going to be traveling before the bomblets deploy. And you can feel it when using this weapon. It feels sluggish as hell to use, and predicting the movement of a vehicle at any kind of distance, which is where you'll be forced to use the thing because of its 40 meter minimum arming distance, it's quite frankly a chore. By the time that your rocket reaches where you think the vehicle was going to be, 9 times out of 10 they're in a different postcode by then. So here's where we stand with the launcher now. It's got some serious firepower behind it, but it takes a majors in trigonometry to make the most out of it, and it takes a bloody long time to actually reach its destination. I don't know about you guys, but I went through college maths scratching my head having to do trigonometry, wondering, when the bloody hell am I going to need this in a real world application? Joke's on me, Planet Side 2 just made an absolute fool out of me, didn't it? And I think if anything, this is a case of a weapon that theoretically has the potential to clear an entire armor column itself without hesitation, but in practice is limited by being frankly unintuitive to use. As I said earlier in the video, when I first picked up the weapon, I was struggling to get grips with it. You know, out of the gate, it became pretty obvious that you would have to run sweeper HUD with it to gain a range finder to range targets with on the fly, which immediately means you're sacrificing an implant slot just for a launcher itself, making your overall build less powerful to the benefit of an already situational launcher. Now, over time, I worked out that if I was in a choke pointy scenario, I could place a personal waypoint down and use that as a guide as to what range I should be aiming for when it came to dropping the bomblets on targets. And that is something I would recommend getting into the habit of doing if you're going to be using this launcher. Get used to putting personal waypoints down on those choke points and use that as a ranging guide and an aiming guide as to where you should be aiming this weapon. But that's problem number one, the fact that you need to dedicate an additional slot in your loadout to making it more effective, or you need to engage in a certain amount of downtime if you want to avoid using that said additional slot to place waypoints on the map. But problem number two for me is the kind of gameplay it demands of you to make the most out of it. Now, I admit, this could very well be personal preference, if anything. You know, some people may enjoy this style of play. But as of right now, the launcher's most effective use is sitting out of sight, behind a wall or on a rooftop with an engineer's ammo pack next to you, just lobbing blind rockets hoping for kills. All the while this is happening, you're left chilling as a sitting duck waiting for that sniper headshot to hit you. To me, combined with some of its clunkiness, it's just not fun to use. It's a personal artillery that feels a bit like a chore. And I will admit, I was excited to use this thing when it first came out. It was a unique addition to the game. Man, more often than not, it feels like it's more effort than the reward is worth. You do sacrifice a lot to make this work in your loadout, which is a shame. As I said before, this weapon, useless against max suits, useless against any vehicles at close quarters distances. It's useless against vehicles at long distances as well. And before anyone comments on the vehicle damage here, I'm sorry, but the vehicle damage is irrelevant as soon as the person in said vehicle discovers what the WASD keys do. If a vehicle dies to this launcher, they were standing still and they frankly deserved it. So as it stands, I do struggle to recommend this weapon to people if they're looking for a new rocket launcher. Yeah, it's fun at times if you get a few kills, like on stream we had a pretty good run, you've seen that clip in the video already, but overall I had a really unfortunate and quite a boring time using this weapon. 
And I can't really recommend anyone use their 1000 certs or their daybreak coins to pick it up just yet. But what can we do to fix it? Out of the gate, it's pretty simple to me. It needs a rangefinder in the scope. That needs to happen. It's a core element of how the weapon operates. I think there needs to be at least a rangefinder built into the scope for it even to function in the first place. But part of me would also like to see some kind of guide implemented as well, because more often than not, yeah, you've got a rangefinder, but you've also got to aim upwards as well more often than not to make the rockets even work. So it'd be pretty cool to see like, you know, a little indicator on your mini map indicate where your bomblets are going to approximately land the further and further you range it out as a bit of a, a ranging tool per se. I don't know if I'm oversimplifying this weapon right now, but I feel as though something needs to happen to make it just a little bit more worthwhile taking by comparison to say a decimator. And the more and more I think about it, the more and more I feel as though it wasn't just because I found the weapon unfun to use. I just know that if I was on the front line using my decimator and my primary weapons instead of sitting behind a wall lobbing these lobbing these rockets over, I still would have been more effective in the given situation. So yeah, that's kind of where I stand with the Scorpion right now, guys. I think it definitely needs a little bit of work. I do applaud the developers for trying something new here and out of the gate, the weapon from a looks and a audio standpoint is fantastic. The developers have done a great job there at ensuring the weapon looks the part and sounds the part. Now we just need to balance it out and make it a little bit more useful in a couple of more situations. And well, I hope you guys were able to sit through a video that I'm sure has probably got some of the most passive and arguably some of the most boring gameplay I think I've ever made use of in a video here. But if you enjoyed the video, guys, make sure you back in the like button, guys. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're new to the channel, then consider subscribing as well. The majority of you who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed. So make sure you get involved, guys, to keep up to date with all content that we release in the long run. As always, you can also find my social media links in the description down below, including my Twitch channel, where we stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and at least one day on the weekend every week. Can't wait to see you guys there as well. Take care guys, have a good one, and I'll see you all in the next video.